Hey, 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 pro nerds. Welcome back to another episode of I'm Not Famous. And I am your not famous host, Iggy, with my not famous co host. Oh, this way. I forget I'm mirror near. Kim, Mr. Carrie. I, I always have to call you Mr. Carrie since you added the Mr. in front. What's going on, Carrie? Not a man, just living the dream over here. So, what about you? <laughs> living the dream. You got a drink in hand ready to go? Oh, I'm man, living. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm living the dream too, a little sunburnt dream just from standing outside for 15 minutes. So, uh, cruel reminder for us uh, shaved head guys um, that it is summer and the sun is out and bright. Um, but speaking of shaved head guys, uh, Carrie, I think we need to add one more to our duo here and let's make it a trio uh, for our episode 27 or episode seven of this season of I'm Not Famous, Mr. Ethan Minsker. Hello, hello, hello. hello, hello. hello. The head. Hello, thank you. There you go. See, I had Beautiful. a full head of hair right before this, and I shaved it just to match just, you guys. Just to match us. I believe it. Mm -hmm. I believe it. Although, if our listeners or our watchers are paying attention to another one of our series, Infinite Spaghetti, they wouldn't believe it because they would have seen you now for about the last three months, I think, with the shaved head. So, um, one of many things you're doing, which we'll definitely talk them all, um, but one of the things you're doing here at Project Nerd. So, how's it going, Ethan? Doing good. Good. I like this. from New York City to you guys on the opposite side of the country. Almost the far opposite side. We're in a little mountain area. We're not quite coastal. Colorado, right? Yeah, yeah. There's still a few states before you get completely to the opposite side. It's a lot farther west than in this. End, so <laughs> this, yeah. You still got um, which I did just watch today. I'm randomly going to bring it up. Army of the Dead. I just watched it right before we started. So uh, we saw Vegas. I started watching that. It's everything I wanted it to be. There's no, there's nothing more than what I expected from it. I mean, you have a zombie tiger in it. You've got plenty of zombie say, that's fighting. That's the best part so yeah. far. Hey, it spoiler is. alerts, man. It was in the trailer. Work. It was Some in the trailer. On the weekends, yeah, dude. that's in the trailer. It's Come in on. all of the promo stuff. No, no, it's like the, the trailer. The trailers have been ruining everything, and and I've just been like completely avoiding all of it. As soon as I saw it hit Netflix, I was so stoked, and then you guys ruined it. Apparently, a zombie <laughs> tiger. Jeez. I'm sorry. We won't tell you, we won't tell you what it does. zombie hockey team then. All right? <laughs> Shit. The zombie Vegas really? Golden Knight. No. <laughs> no I was going to say, if there's a zombie <laughs> hockey team, I'm already back, bought back in. Uh, right. Well, the part um, of it is the ice is all melted, so it's like they're kind of like skating around <laughs> and, you know. They're already walking funny as it is anyways. But it, yeah. before we head into our theme and talk more things, Ethan, let's talk about, as I mentioned, you're doing Infinite Spaghetti for Project Nerd, but you're kind of... Uh, an all-around creator juggernaut, I would say. You, I think the reason you get along so well with Project Nerd is you're a lot like us, is that you just like to create everything and anything you can. Um, so why don't you give us a quick list of some of the things you do? All right. Well, I make films. This is a physical DVD. Remember those? <laughs> what is that? Right after VHS. <laughs> so I've been making films since the 90s. Um, I do fanzines, right? Right. There's one of my last films out, Man in Camo, that you guys did a nice little write-up about. Oh, Let's wait a minute. It. You're in it. So, Iggy, you're in the film. I am. I am. That's Project my, uh, is two. That's my t featured IMDb credit, actually. Books? Yeah. A little bit of everything. Films, books, artwork, visual art, street art. If you look at yeah. my Instagram, you'll see a bunch of street art that I've been doing during the pandemic and all of that. But basically, I do a lot of my own creative stuff, but I like to also collaborate with others, and I like to focus attention and, um, you know, on other types of creators. So the Infinite Spaghetti is the creative and cosplay archive. So it's not just cosplay, it's like nerd culture or like filmmakers or anything that kind of fits, I think, within the project nerd, nerd, project nerd realm of interest. So like before I was writing fanzine reviews for you guys, and I don't think anybody at all cared over there. So I figured like if, if we're going to do a thing with you guys, let's focus on what kind of like the popular elements and cosplay you were always saying was something that a lot of people seem to have interest yeah. on your site. And now I'm adding like graphic novel reviews. And in the podcast, we don't just talk to the creators of all of the things behind like cosplay and cosplay adjacent and independent and weird films. It's the how to your how to make it yourself. And then also like what kind of 
media they're, they're ingesting. So if you like what they do, you might like what they watch. Is that a yeah. good rundown? I think so. I think so. And I think you bring up a very good point here, too, because probably our top, well, probably our number one search engine traffic or what they're looking for is cosplay. I'm not going to list to you some of the searches that send people to our cosplay on our website. But the point being is if you like the galleries you're finding on the site, head on over to our YouTube channel and you can actually see Ethan interviewing some of these awesome and talented people. Um, yeah, yeah, I think we've got, I want to say we're at seven or eight episodes out now. And then we have a handful yeah, of you. A couple weeks ago, eight is coming up this week or next week. Right. Yeah. This week is your, this week's your week. And then, um, but in between that, like you mentioned, so yeah, Jordan Goff, who's like a filmmaker, right? And then here coming up soon is what would the creepy doll thing? What's it called again? It's super weird. Oh, looking. Twisted Tugs. So I love it. On episode 12 is this guy's cousin, Anthony Ferrara, who does the sci fi films that are, are amazing, like low budget sci fi. Like if you ever watched The Guild, which was like a web series about gaming and stuff. He did a whole kind of like sci-fi thing that's very adjacent to that and has a few people from the guild in that. And that's called Galaxy, Galactic Galaxy. I hate that title because it always throws me off. But he does a whole bunch of these kind of like independent sci-fi films. And when I was, for that one is an actual on location infinite spaghetti. So not the web version, but like I went to LA, I went to his place, we talked in person. We touched, you know, like each other and it was, you know, it's a shocking thing to do after a year to be like, Hey, I can touch you. Um, and he showed me a bunch of the props that he makes and all this stuff. But while I was there, he said, Oh, you should check out my cousin. And I was like, he, I was like, sure. And he shows me this Instagram thing of this guy. Who's like another ball guy covered in tattoos all over huge Jack guy. And he makes these like ventriloquist dolls. But they're dolls of like serial killers. They're like scary clowns. Um, he did one today of um, big dr drug cartel guys, um, dead rock right. star. So, what? I was gonna say right up your alley, huh, Gary? You want some? Uh, you want some twisted clown dolls in your room? No, these are like <laughs> totally this, the this, the clown ones are scary as hell. But he did like Charles Manson and. Anyway, so we were talking about that, and it's a very interesting, like that interview is, is interesting because he has such like a knowledge and history about film that'll be like, oh, we're talking about this, and then he goes into kind of like this backstory of like this, you know, obscure film or obscure serial killer or whatever. So it's like this history of that, and then all these dolls that he makes. So yeah, Twisted Tug, that's episode 11, and then it launches into Anthony that's 12 and then we go back to the what we're doing currently awesome so some things to look forward to over on project nerds youtube as well as this um but before we get too much further carrie should we introduce the theme of this season let it begin okay ask any racer any real racer it don't matter if you win by an inch or a mile winning's winning it's a Fast and Furious edition. That's right. Our whole season is Fast and Furious themed. And guess what, Ethan? You are in Fast and Furious 7 with us. That's right. We are in Fast and Furious 7. And before we go too far, just a reminder, Project Nerd is not affiliated with NBC Universal. There you go. So <laughs> are, are you ready, Ethan, to talk Fast yeah, and Furious? Yeah, bring it on. <laughs> uh, Carrie, did you watch this one recently too? I did. Uh, obviously, like we're... I don't know if you guys are into this whole thing on YouTube, but we're seeing Fast and Furious 9 left and right. SNL did a skit last night portraying Vin Diesel going back to the movies. We are fully set as a society to welcome back Fast and Furious. <laughs> that's that's we, what we're living we are for. Ready. We are ready for it, as I believe Vin Diesel said himself last night on SNL, to watch it the way it should in a movie theater. So I am stoked by Fast 7 brought us Jason Statham. So absolutely, I am stoked to rewatch this multiple times. So if we get in there, um, this Fast and Furious 7 worldwide box office, $1.5 billion earned, um, of course. And this came out in 2015. 
you mentioned Carrie ready to get us back in theaters. I do want to point out the weekend we're recording this is uh, the international opening for Fast and Furious 9. And they're already talking $160 million overseas, which is mind blowing post pandemic. I don't know. Ethan, do you watch these Fast and Furious movies? Let's see. Be honest okay, with so, us. <laughs> um, I try not to, but sometimes work makes me see chunks of it. Like I had to do a, my, my day job is a video editor for a cable, let's say network, you know, a bunch of, a few channels and we were doing a marathon. So it was um, a bunch of the fast and furious. So it's like, I know it was a Tokyo drift one and a couple others, like maybe four or five of those. And then it was like a rush hour combo. So it was like a whole marathon weekend of rush hour versus Fast and the Furious. So let's say I had my fill. I would like to say though, like from what I remember, like Vin Diesel, he was a doorman, right? Like on, in the bars in New York City in Lower East Side, I believe. From what I remember, he was a doorman at a bar, a Z bar that we used to all go hang out in. And uh, you, yeah, you would know best. I, I, like, I remember him being just like this bouncer with like a deep voice. And the funny thing is that same bar had uh, this other bouncer, Derek Green, who at one point went to Brazil and became the lead singer for a metal band, Separatora. So it's like that one bar sparked uh, kind of two legends. Well, you might uh, know, know him as... Fights, so. <laughs> fights. Well, he might have broke them up as one Mark Sinclair, because that was his name before becoming Vin Diesel. And um, yeah, I believe he did some modeling too ahead, like before he actually got into the acting. And um, he's done a few a few interesting movies, but it was definitely the Fast and Furious franchise that made him one of the highest grossing actors in Hollywood. And how could you fail with a plot like this for Fast and Furious 7? After defeating international terrorist Owen Shaw, Dominic Toretto, Brian O'Connor, and the rest of the crew has separated to return to more normal lives. However, Deckard Shaw, Owen's older brother, is thirsty for revenge. Yeah. Is this I don't the, know what any of that means. I used to watch the Riddick films. I like that. Those are good. I do like those too. Um, I feel Carrie. like they should keep doing that. <laughs> right. And I see he Triple X, to. like he did Triple X. Right? That's, that's probably as bad he as that. Pacifier? Come on. He did a lot of movies. <laughs> the he pacifier. Only... Yeah, my daughter. Let's see it. My daughter what was the other one? The tooth, the two, or no, is that The Rock that did that's the tooth the Rock. Rock so he's in the these too, but he's in these. Out. So you it's not too far. I do not know this. <laughs> because I wouldn't let them watch The Rock as Tooth Fairy. Like, um, but The Rock's in these Fast and Furious movies, so we're all right. So, Carrie, why don't you give us a breakdown, since you are the brave soul who took another look at these movies recently. Man, there, there's so many issues I had with this. Uh, as you actually mentioned, Ethan, this was an interesting callback to Tokyo Drift. Uh, Sung Kang's character, Han, is actually killed by Jason Statham in this movie. So you went from... Tokyo Drift, where Han is in basically every Fast and Furious, and then all of a sudden they culminated by him getting killed by Jason Statham to start the movie. And if that wasn't the craziest plot twist, you know what they throw at you this, this particular movie? We're going to drop cars from a plane. We're going to put... That just seems normal, though. And like, Didn't they have one where like a sub flips over and, like, hey, you know, there's a thing on a... Spoiler Hulu. alert, that's, a, that's eight. They do the, okay. sub, the sub in eight. They decided to, and my favorite thing in researching this, if I get his name right, and I apologize, actually, I don't apologize. I don't even know who you are. Spiro Rosatis, the stunt coordinator, told Business Insider that he wanted to rely more on real stunts rather than CGI for this airplane drop because he wanted the whole sequence to feel real. Like you're going to drop out of a plane in a car, so we need to see it. So... No, well, this is important. there's a parachute, right? So, oh, they, oh, they strap the parachutes to the car because they're in the there. cars. They yeah. get in the cars. Yeah. So yeah. it totally works. But it's not I like mean, unless you know, they like, put jet engines on it and wings. It, it, it was definitely this is where I think uh, we started to realize that there's no plot anymore. There's really no point in dialogue anymore. It's just going to be the absolute insane cast of people that want to make money. And then ultimately us watching something and turning our brains off for, I think, two and a half to three hours. But 
with that said, I actually did enjoy this. Uh, I actually really like this one more than the others, uh, mostly because of Jason Statham's character. I thought he added a really interesting dynamic to the cast. But yeah, I think we also got to see uh, Dame Helen Mirren in this one as well. I think she comes in towards the end of this movie, which anytime you put her in a movie, I'm, I'm probably going to watch till the end. So I won't argue you on that one. I won't argue you on that one. Um, but yeah, almost $4 billion globally. And Ethan, did you know this fun fact? It was based, the whole franchise you is based I on know. an- Okay, the whole franchise is based on an article from Vibe Magazine in 1998 from Ken Lee. He wrote an article for a magazine and that's what this entire franchise is based off of. About car racing, I guess. I, I, yeah, I don't know. Um, Carrie is our- hey, I got two points fan. to make. One, they haven't explored space, so we need to see cars. Carrie, do you want to- the one that they're doing right now in nine, they go in outer space. <laughs> yes. Nine. The you want to up ten out, fingers. Like, you're confusing hey, me. No, no, nine. The, I think we're, we're, we're hearing that it's after the credits or before the credits, they shoot someone off to space. So oh, it's okay. at the well, end of I'm... it. And that's where Vin Diesel becomes Riddick. We've been saying it all season. <laughs> yeah, that's where it's. I'm into not, the, Riddick the eyes right. mess I'm up. He has to go to. I'm not what you call a spoiler. I'm called like a psychic spoiler. Like I spoil before they even know, like before they've even written it, it's going to be cars interjected into space, landing on the moon and knocking over the American flag. And yeah, Ben Diesel parachute. getting out going like, we got to show that up. Like some sort of like catch line. Well, Ethan, I think you're prepared now. So what's important is we started this season of creating, asking our guests, what character would you play in Fast and Furious 10? But as it evolved, we came up with such a great set of character characters. We found our director, we found our villain, and we decided to make our own competing film franchise. So as of right now, um, we have a we have our woman lead who is in a love triangle with, I guess we have to bring over Vin Diesel and The Rock. Um, or no, it's Idris Elba and The Rock. Uh, we have our, our robot who's our cliche quote guy. Um, Sav is our, uh, what, what wants to be like the Charlie Day in, in Pacific Rim style character, like the crazy side character. Um, Dez is the tattoo artist, but secretly the criminal that's just listening in on their plans. Um, and then HP is the director of our franchise, but he's also going to cameo as a character who always says in English, please, no matter what somebody says to him. And then my dad is in the film and just wants to make a lot of money. So now that you know that's all the roles filled, where are you fitting in in our franchise, Ethan? Because now you're a part of this. You are now in it. I'm clearly the Interpol cop brought in to track all these guys down who's also Slash working for MI5 and Slash the CIA and Slash <laughs> has a demolition background with the ability to punch cars into outer space. <laughs> All right. I love it. I love it. <laughs> if you see that I, there's a, a thing on Hulu about these guys who make these like, um, they do like independent films, but they're like short YouTube like films, but they did one episode called like car puncher. And it's like all about the fast and the furious thing. So it's like the guy who like, you know, like in all his superhero things, he punches the car and it like flips, but it's like two competing franchises so they keep punching bigger and bigger it's like a bus and it's like a train and it's like a you know a jet liner so you should look at that it, it would definitely I'll fit i to check it out the thing i cannot remember the name but i'm sure people you know car puncher sounds good you know, the episode was like called like car puncher or something carrie what's our what's our franchise called again slow and slow and cautious Slow and cautious. That's instead of fast. We're doing slow and cautious. So uh, yeah, we've got. You a should whole have told me that first. I would have been the crossing guard then. <laughs> the crossing guard with an with a uh, vendetta. Well, you're you're disguised as the crossing guard because you're there. Well, no, your, I'm the crossing guard. Am I five? Right. Oh, okay. I'm undercover. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. The, so who are you busting? Our our tattoo artist villain or this group of. Uh, not quite villains, but not quite heroes. Who are, who I mean, are you, you know, like in the first? Fast Furious, it's like this character would be going after the group. Right, okay. This okay. group of car thieves or whatever the heck they do. Well, I think you have to because our robot, um, uh, 
Flux, uh, he's trash talking robot we had on an earlier episode. He wants to say like one of those like totally in character lines, like right before you die, like you have to in the movies. Like, right. and so I think you're going to have to be the cause of his death now since you're going after him, I think. And then we'll have to get one of the other robots, another robot on later, Carrie, so we can have him seek revenge, go after Ethan's character to try yeah. to, to avenge right. his I, I can visualize myself brother. on on the moon and the robot is there and I'm holding one of those stop go signs and it's like stop and then it's like go and then the missile crashes on the robot and kills him right something like that stop go I don't know what crossing guards do clearly <laughs> no, no, clearly clearly um so Carrie does have some fast and furious trivia for us here at the end uh but again okay. Carrie I I do want to say thank you for being the brave soul to uh work your way through all these movies again this winter so we could keep them fr the plots fresh. I, I had to cry like multiple times watching this movie. This is Paul Walker's last film. Um, I thought I did him justice by going out with Wiz Khalifa's, you know, see you again song. It was very inspirational. Um, if, if I so, ever so like go out and follow me, if I'm wrong, but he was killed getting out of his car, opening the gate, and then the car rolled and crushed him, right? No, that's no. the um, that was the uh, young uh, Russian actor that was in the Star Trek film, the newer Star Trek oh, film. Oh, uh, um, okay. Ashton or something like I that? Can't, I can't remember his name. This was, he. they left a fundraiser and were actually driving way too fast, and the car crashed in the way it crashed right. and instantly combust, and him yep. and the other passenger with him like pretty quickly um, because of the, just the, I think it was just one of those ways that the car hit that it immediately just went up in flames. Yeah. He, he was the passenger. His fun. friend was the driver. Oh, okay. Uh, his friend, I think also was uh, in some of the stunts in fast and furious. So it, it was right, right. an insane vehicle, fiery crash, I believe in Los Angeles, but uh, he has a twin brother, which we found out uh, pretty quickly as this movie released. So his brother, uh, filmed a lot of the last scenes in the film because it was in production uh, when he was killed. So it, it's it's one of those where, you know, obviously we've been poking fun at and I still will. I think it's a garbage franchise, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I will represent Paul Walker from Varsity Blues all day long, man. Paul Fire Walker, that fucking pig skin. <laughs> Paul Walker in my heart uh, brought us, uh, I, I forget the, you know, the, a whipped cream bikini varsity blues will always have a place in my mind as a young adolescent man. But yeah, this, this one was tough. I think, uh, I think it's probably why it grossed as much as it did. I think people that oh, have yeah. followed this franchise definitely wanted to see the culmination of his character. Uh, and, and for all it's worth, I think they did a good job. It's always been about family. We've been joking about that all, all season, but it really felt like if they are family, this is the way to kind of send them off. So tough in, in that aspect, but uh, obviously we had eight and now we have nine. So the franchise lives on. Right. Well, Ethan, as a filmmaker, you probably know this best even, and I know you do a lot more documentary style films and stuff, but when you work with somebody so long, you become really close to them. And I can imagine, Carrie, as, like you said, as much as we make fun of this franchise, you're seven films in with the same group of characters. I'm sure these people, I'm sure it hit a lot of these people hard because they, I'm sure got really close to them. Yeah, I mean, if you're on like any onset production or anything, you're spending a lot of time together. It's like right. brutal, brutal hours, long, long hours. And regardless of pandemics or not, you are kind of isolated from everything else. You know, like you're on location or you're just shooting such brutal long hours, you're really not seeing anybody else. So it's everybody kind of on the crew and talent gets pretty close together. So yeah, you would imagine if one big key character like that passes away, it probably really just devastated everybody within the within the production. Yeah, and, and for me, it kind of brought it back. Yeah, I was a big Chris Farley fan. I think that's probably our generation, and and to see you know him pass, almost heroes came out, uh, and and I think that was his last movie, and he was kind of in half of it. So. I was kind of interested to see how they would let his character kind of leave the franchise, but I thought I did it pretty good for what it was, but yeah, nonetheless, it, it, was, it was tough to see. We got That's my okay. kid behind me. Yeah, oh, okay. I'm, not, I'm not waving at you, Carrie. I'm waving at <laughs> I was like, I was just waving bye to Carrie. This is how we write Carrie out of the franchise. <laughs> no, see, it's like, it's like, no. Um, yeah, so I, I think as much as we do poke fun at it, you bring up some good points, and I think there's a lot 
um, and of course, different world. But I get so close. We do. I do so much project nerd stuff, and we do so much work. And even just the people we meet, and Ethan, you're one of that come in and just do these things. You get close to these people just at this level. I can imagine that it was. And I do appreciate, as much as I don't care much for the franchise myself either, I do appreciate that they didn't kill off his character, that they let him go off, and then he because then don't don't they have like a kid, and so now he's kind of escaping the violent life on the because he's spending time with his kid or whatever. Yeah, it's a second kid. Uh, the movie kind of opens up with with them finding out that she's pregnant and that's when that letter bomb goes off and blows up the family house so it's an interesting i would say you know first 10 minutes you had the incident with han in tokyo statham gets out with the necklace and then you had the bomb uh at uh, vin diesel's house with all of them there so but yeah it, it's the second kid that's on the way or, uh, and that's kind of how the story takes off uh with fast seven so my question is, and Ethan, I don't know, I said you've seen pieces of this. My favorite thing about this franchise is that every film, there's a, there's a couple usually, but at least one just beyond nuts. And this is the one, is, is this, so this is the one where they drop the cars out of the airplane, but is this the one where they jump from tower to tower or was that the, it is the one. So they ride, it's the two towers and they have to get to this floor, but the security is too rough. So they ride a freight elevator up in this other building that's high enough to where they can drive the car out the window and will drive it through the window of the other tower mm. onto the right floor to crash the party. Absolutely brilliant filmmaking. Whoever wrote that deserved an Oscar. That's all I can say. Um, just amazing. I'd say in New York, they uh, they did this thing, the High Line, which is this elevated track on part of New York. And it's okay. by the galleries. In all of that neighborhood, the buildings became super high end, super expensive. And I heard that a bunch of the buildings had these elevators where you basically drive into the elevator, the car is brought to your floor, and then you park your car in your palatial apartment. So I was like, that's weird. Like, I don't know if I'd want my car in my apartment I mean, but you, you got to imagine like this is a super like it's their apartment is probably an entire floor of a building yeah. and the cars are probably like you know super expensive cars lamborghinis and stuff i mean i guess whatever something lexuses or whatever yeah lamborghinis let's say sure we don't see that many lamborghinis in new york if you get a lamborghini in new york you know somebody's going to be sitting on it taking photos or some asshole is going to put like a rock through the window just to be a pain in the ass. But let's, that's why let's you keep it in your apartment. That's why you keep right. it in your apartment. You can't drive it anywhere then. <laughs> but I imagine when I was hearing this, I was like, somebody at some point is going to be like, you know, accidentally shift into drive right by accident. I don't think it's going to be on purpose, but I just imagine like a car flying out one of these glass windows into another adjacent building. So, Maybe the Fast and the Furious is on to some reality that will happen at some point. Yeah, as long as Ronda Ronda Rousey is is in that apartment when it happens, I I will be pretty happy. Uh, This was that culmination. We talked about Gina Carano. I think in prior episodes, they brought back an MMA star in Ronda Rousey. uh, But she plays like the bodyguard to this uh, insane prince that has the supercar. I'm telling you, man, Like when I had to reread it and then also rewatch it a couple of times, Man. Wait, you read the books, the Fast and the Furious books? No, I had to read the dialogue for the trivia, which, again, <laughs> uh, it's a fast read. It's about a five to ten minute read of probably the entire script. There's a lot of uh, gaps of we're going to drop cars from planes for 20 minutes and then two pieces of dialogue. Uh, I think it really was dialogue was cars don't fly, Dom. Like I, I would have loved it. Like, is that is that two on the nose? Should we try to – no, we can't say cars don't fly. But, but yeah, it, it's definitely with Ronda Rousey's addition, that's kind of where that fight scene takes takes off with uh, Michelle Rodriguez's character. Uh, but, yeah, the, the supercar from one building to another just to get a microchip uh, is, I believe, just the beginning uh, of the actual plot in this in this film. I feel like this is really, I mean, they had started to kind of embrace it, but I feel like really, really embraced it to where they said, we know that people are looking for the obscene, just craziness. And so they just lean in seven. They just start to lean into it. Cause I think you have the Hobbs and Shaw to where it's really funny um, to where like uh, when he's stabbing somebody with a brick, like he's like, you could stab somebody with the brick. Like it's just getting bananas out there. 
Um, but I don't know. It's action but, porn. Right, it is, it is. But before we talk too much more Fast and Furious, Ethan, I want to know what you're up to. I know you mentioned your most recent film was Man in Camo, um, which where can we find that? Well, Man in Camo, you can find on YouTube, movies, Amazon Prime, uh, Vudu, um, Dish TV, Direct TV, most places that you can VOD a movie, you can find Man in Camo. And okay. there's a whole variety of other, like there's like 10 titles on um, Amazon if you want to find my other films. But yeah, basically most places you search, not on Netflix, not on Hulu, but everywhere else you can find it. Any place that has that subscription, or not, I'm sorry, the rental option, right? Like the- Rent or buy, yeah. I mean, but it right. is on like um, Tubi or, it's on a few like streaming services, but nothing that I can recall out of hand at this second. To be yeah, honest. I definitely recommend self-medicated. I think you did an amazing job uh, on that piece of art. I thought that was really interesting and especially in the mental health awareness kind of month, uh, seeing a title like that and, and still being, I think what you made that in, in 14? Uh, Self-medicated, yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, we shot it in 2013 and yeah, we probably finished it and distributed it in 2015 and that's on YouTube movies again and it's on Apple TV and iTunes and like um, search Ethan Minsker and write a Look review and that's the thing I'm battling right now. So you have to, you know, like Amazon Prime just purged a lot of independent filmmakers, right? Like, so every day I'm seeing one of my other titles going off of Amazon Prime where you could watch them for free and to only rent or buy. And it's not just me. This is like basically everybody except for the biggest Hollywood films. See, like Amazon Prime, I used to think is like your video store, right? Like you go down a rabbit hole and you find crazy, crazy films. Yeah, you find some now weird stuff. Right? To, yeah, well, now they're trying to make it only exactly identical to Netflix and Hulu and everything else. So their one greatest advantage to for people like me to be interested, they're completely scrapping and just trying to be a curated site, which is garbage. So. So go review not only Ethan's stuff, but your favorite independent things on there, on IMDb, which is theirs as well. If you put reviews over there and can, then that'll also probably help some. But yeah, yep. the independent world needs the opinion. You guys need it more. And that's part of, I think, why we talk Tallgrass so much this season, because as we mentioned, we've done a few episodes now with Tallgrass alum. And I think that's one of my favorite things about these independent film festivals we cover is that, you know, it's it's... I don't want to say bigger filmmakers, it's not a passion or anything, because they definitely have passion projects and there's some amazing people. And apparently uh, the guy who makes most of these Fast and Furious movies, according to HP, Justin Lin's actually a pretty solid guy who likes to make some solid movies too. But what I'm trying well, to say is that you thing, guys are actually. there, you guys are there for the art, like you guys made a piece of art and you're there on your own representing it, trying to push it. Oh yeah, I mean, if you're watching my films, I'm like handcrafted, bloody knuckle, spending months and months to give you 10 seconds of crazy animated footage that's real as opposed to computer generated and you know a stylistic thing that you won't find anywhere else but i'd say it's like when you watch generally the bigger hollywood movies as we were talking before carrie was is that you see a trailer and it tells you basically the entire beginning middle and end of a movie you really don't have to go in and see the movie because the trailer gave it away now, I think for a lot of the independent movies is that the goal is to give you, as a viewer, an experience that is unlike anything you've had before that you haven't, that you cannot predict the ending, even if you've watched the trailer. So that's what you get from like a tall grass or an indie film fest or Vitalines and tape heads or Hell's Half Mile. There's all these amazing independent film festivals that are just dying out there that people should really go check out because the programmers are top notch and they're giving you a very curated, amazing experience with the filmmakers many of the times where you can, you know, you can't watch something on Netflix and go like, let me ask the filmmaker what he was thinking. Like, no, you can't. Like you go to the festival, you can go hang out and stalk the actual Stop. filmmaker. I wear this camo suit at all these film festivals don't you stock. Know. Don't stock. We're not encouraging stocking. That's I love it. Stock the heck <laughs> out of me. I've had 
I had somebody who just a few days ago watched a film I did in the early 2000s, late 90s called The Soft Hustle. And that's like a narrative I did with a camcorder. And we just shot every week. We would shoot two hours every week. Took four years to finish it, a feature film. It has like Steve Bonji, the president of the Hells Angels in it, Jesse Mallon, and all these kind of punk rock legends of the Lower East Side. And this guy wrote me and said, hey, you know, where can I get like a, a DVD of it? And I'm like, well, it's on the Dolls of Lisbon as an extra film. And then we started talking and then he bought my books and a bunch of other stuff. So that's a film that's dead to me. It's so old, but I can see on my Amazon um, you know, account. I over the pandemic, I uploaded all my back titles, and the soft hustle is the one that's now being watched like thousands of minutes a day. So it's like blowing wow. up for some reason on Amazon Prime until they're going to take it off of Prime and make it something paid for. So I don't know what I was out. talking about there, but yeah, <laughs> no, no. Well, before we, because we got to get to our trivia here before we wrap. Is there anything else we can look for in the near future, or has the pandemic? You mentioned you focused a lot on the art during the pandemic. Is that where you really were? Or... You can see that on my Instagram. I have okay. a documentary I'm working on about the artist Scooter LaForge, who's like this downtown amazing artist in New York that I've been shooting for the last four years. There's a magazine that centered on underground film called Film Threat that was really big in the 90s. Um, I've been working on a documentary on them during the entire pandemic. So... Hopefully the film threat one may be coming out maybe next year. Or we're going to start the festivals in 2022. So, All right. All right. Yeah. Another scripts and stuff that nobody's going to give a shit about, but always doing something. <laughs> there you go. We give a shit about it. Your fellow Baldies give a shit about it. So, Well, you know, as soon as the film's done, I'm going to be like, hey, can you guys review this? <laughs> right. Well, and, and we will. We will. We'll but before we do uh, carry, so... There you go. Well, Carrie, he did his research. He checked out self medicated That was unprompted, Ethan. I didn't push him to it. He That's did good. It Please write a should... review there. I need it. <laughs> yeah, I should have pushed him to it. But anyways, before we do any review writing, we've got one more thing to do. Are you ready Trivia for this, up. Ethan? Yes. What yeah, are you ready. smiling about? Dude, I almost had you. <laughs> you almost had me? That's right. It's time for a Fast and Furious Showdown. So this is how it goes, Ethan. Kerry is going to run the show here, and he's going to give us a question, or he's going to give us quotes. Um, what are these quotes based off of, Kerry? Either Fast so, and Furious 7 or... Yep, or famous artists. Oh, so okay. knowing that you're an artist, knowing you're an artist, I, so he's going to give us a quote. I've got a C in art history, so I'm going to suck at both of these. Let's go. <laughs> So we're not going to buzz in or answer. Basically, he's going to ask, and then we just both can either go with the same answer or we can go against I'll each other. Please, and we're not even fully, com completely keeping score, unless I'm winning. Then we'll keep score. But anyways, go ahead, Carrie. This is I don't your, think your you've rodeo. won one yet. I, I, I don't know at the end of the day if uh, you've won one. Oh, Maybe I would have definitely beat my dad. I would have definitely beat my dad in trivia. I HP, HP destroyed before. me. HP destroyed yeah. me. I'll give you that. That guy knew it because every time Carrie, he did a director's versus Fast and Furious uh, 6. And every time he do a quote, HP was like, well, a director wouldn't say this. He'd do this. He'd say this. this and, then be, and then he was right. And I was like, holy cow, dude. Like he knew what he was talking about. So hopefully Ethan's not a, uh, not a, a sleeping uh, trivia expert here either too. So I am definitely uh, not. All right. Well, let's well, here get we go. with it. I'm ready. All right. All right. The first one, you can't tell someone they love you. You, so it's a, this is a Fast and the Furious one. You think so? No, you can't tell someone you love them. Well, you have to show them you love them. But I would guess that's maybe a Fast and the Furious quote. I'm going to go famous artist just to oppose him. Okay. That was Fast and Furious. Oh, man. Yep. <laughs> it's uh, terrible writing. Uh, that, that was an interesting. Oh, it's horrible. It was where uh, Michelle Rodriguez's character had amnesia still, right? And. Vin Diesel's character didn't want to tell her that she loved him. So that, that's kind of the context so like, behind, behind the, the that writing, writing. When you're writing scripts, they tell you never to write, I love you. Like you're never supposed to write that in script form in any kind of like script. They do sometimes. So literally the writer there was like, well, they tell you not to. So I'm going to have them say, 
I mean, I that feel like that's, that's what Fast and Furious does. They say, you're not supposed to do this. We're going to do it. As I think Sap told us, I think a computer is writing the entire script at this point. So <laughs> the, the computer doesn't do anything uh, the right way. Uh, all right. So let's see here. I don't do drugs. I am a drug. Artist. I'm going artist. I'm going to say yeah. it before he gets in. I'm going to say artist. That was. That was Salvador Dali. Okay. Yeah, and I, I remember, yeah, he did not do drugs. I remember that. He's just mess. Everyone assumed he did. He um, probably drank a lot. But, all right. Yeah. <laughs> the emotions are sometimes so strong that I work without knowing it. Uh, I'm going to guess artist. I, I think artist, too. I want to go against him, but I'm going to have to say artist as well. That is also an artist. That was Van Gogh. Okay. Let's see here. They say to live in the hearts of those we leave behind is not to die. What do you think, Ethan? I mean, I'm leaning fast and the furious here on that one. I feel like it's it's perfect for the whole Paul Walker situation we were just talking about. So, like, fast and furious would make sense. But Carrie has pulled some fast ones off of us this season, so no pun intended there. I'll stay fast and furious. Is that what you're going with? I'm saying fast and furious. Okay. I'm going to agree with them, yeah. It is Fast and Furious. Okay. Bang! Okay. Getting every one of these right. Yeah, this, yeah. this is tough. Uh, I got two more. Two more. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, you know the best decision I ever made was stepping into the store and buying that first sandwich. Is there a sandwich shop in Fast and Furious? I don't know. Um, I'm going to say artist. It's just too stupid. Okay, it's I'm going to go either but i'm gonna say artist i'm gonna go fast and furious just because i need to gain a point to catch up with him so i have to go opposite what he's saying well you gained it you definitely gained it it was, was a, fast and furious yep it was it was a callback paul walker's character and meeting dominic toretto's sister she was actually making him a sandwich that where the line uh, i'll have a tuna on rye became very popular in the first movie all right okay. So let's see here. Uh, so two more. Sorry. Uh, I'll, there are no mistakes, only happy accidents. That's an artist. Artist. Do you know which artist it is? I know I've that's, heard it, but. Um, that's not part of the trivia. I'm sorry. But you both are right. Uh, it's a very. It's not famous. Keith Haring or somebody like that. It's something. I don't know. Very current artist that everyone loves. That is always happy. Banksy, Bob, Bob Ross, yeah. <laughs> Bob, Bob Ross. Ross. Bob yes, Ross is a current. Bob Ross. <laughs> Everything's yeah, yeah. happy. I've heard that. It's <laughs> all right. This is uh, my favorite in doing the research on on the Fast and Furious movies. Uh, that's wait. Sorry, let me. I have to read it because I need to do it right. But you're just kind of giving it away. It sounds like you just said the Fast and the Furious. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Just lean that's, fast and furious, people. That's it. A dying, bloated pig rotting with gaseous fumes seeping out. If you are lucky, it will explode, but there is always some asshole ready to keep that from happening. I mean, you I think you're going to say it's fast and the furious, but I feel like that is kind of like that could easily be an artist one, too. These are good. It's tough because some idiot artist would say that, too. All right, I'm going to say Fast and Furious. I'm going to go Artist to go against him. Okay, yeah, that's fair. It's all the marbles we're here. It. I, I don't want to give the answer now because that idiot artist was you. That was you <laughs> in an Me? online. Yes, sir. That was your quote. Oh, <laughs> it is yeah. That is an idiot thing I would say for writer, sure. Writer, filmmaker, artist, fanzine, publisher, and founder of the antagonist movement, Ethan. <laughs> Uh, Carpazine or Carpazine? I don't know if that's the public. Carpe Diem. Yeah, Carpe Diem Zine. Yep. Yeah. So I that was that. A, a abbreviated quote, but a quote nonetheless that you had made. Uh, your response in, in that case was absolutely perfect. Uh, it's actually in, in a question What do you dislike about the art world? Yeah, it is a bloated, dying, gassy pig. <laughs> De a dead, bloating, gas. Yeah, I can visualize that. Got it. Man, you I am that there. idiot artist. That was good. <laughs> Man, you stumped me. I've done a lot of great. interviews. I uh, barely remember any of them. That was great. <laughs> that well, is that's, accurate. 
on the art world. That is very accurate. <laughs> Perfect, perfect, perfect. So uh, obviously you have it down at the bottom of the screen. Go check out at Ethan Minsker for his Instagram. We'll link over to some of his other stuff when we do post this. Ethan, obviously, Infinite Spaghetti over on the Project Nerd YouTube. And guys, listen to me. People listening to this, I know I keep putting the audio out there on our podcast feed, and so many of you listen to it. But I promise you, the video experiences that we're giving you over at Project Nerd are so much better. So head over to YouTube and watch these videos. They're fun. We've got cool animated intros in there. You can see Ethan's face when he gets stumped on his own quote. The great things here. So definitely go to YouTube, search Project Nerd, watch Infinite Spaghetti, watch I'm Not Famous, watch everything else we're throwing out there because we're throwing out a lot of videos right now. And we do love you listening to our podcast, but we want you to watch our videos as well. We want you to see these faces. They're not oh, yeah. pretty. Like They're not it, pretty. Comment, but... share, review, all of that metadata helps. <laughs> all right. Yes, definitely. Awesome. Ethan, well, it was a pleasure. I hope you gained some knowledge on Fast and Furious. I and gained some knowledge about myself. <laughs> and it's great to have you on board for our slow and cautious franchise. We'll get the contract in the mail. But other than that, uh, any last words before we head out? Uh, stay frosty. Is that like a Fast and the Furious quote? <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> we can call it one. Awesome. It'd probably be more like, keep it lit. <laughs> there you go all right carrie thank you again for the trivia it's great we've got one more movie to cover we're almost to the end i might shed a tear at the end of this we'll have to we have to find a new franchise for next season ethan we'll get you on some more of our shows and i can't wait to run into you again out on the film festival circuit everybody else again go check out our stuff projectnerd.com project nerd on youtube and of course anywhere you get your audio podcast and until next time remember we're not famous mm -hmm.